What's going on guys? Good morning, good morning. I want to talk about how to build a business and I want to talk about the dangers of fast money and a path of broken dreams and expectations. As you know, I'm getting ready to start running ads. So what I'm doing is I am watching ads and I'm starting to see a very similar pattern. The number of I was down, I was destitute, um, then I found this magical thing and now I'm a millionaire. Now you guys know my story. I used to be homeless and I went through about a two year journey from, well actually homeless to living in a boarding house for three years and then after I escaped the boarding house, I was on about a two year journey to build my business and I didn't become a millionaire. I went from struggling to really good income with my third job at Business Environments. Then I started my business. I made a lot of gross revenue, but I didn't do really well in terms of profitability. And then I got in the storage auction business where I made a lot of money. But I didn't become a millionaire. I didn't become a millionaire in the storage auction business. And this is what I'm consistently seeing over and over and over and over. You can have these really bad circumstances and you can be down and out and you just flip a switch. Now you're a millionaire. Oh, and this is something else too. Not only is the money fast. No, 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 no. Now you don't have to work. You have all of this free time to hang out with your family, to hang out with your friends, and this thing, this business, whatever it is, um, it's just going to absolve you from working, you know, a low wage job. I saw one advertisement where the guy didn't graduate high school, he didn't graduate college, now he's a millionaire. And I'm beginning to see a pattern. I'm beginning to see the evidence of fast money. I'm seeing ads to say, you don't need a website. You don't have to call anyone. You don't have to talk to anyone. You don't have to do anything. And you can literally have all of this money. And I saw one ad where they have this girl, her name's Callie. And she's like, Hey, I signed up for the program in like about three days in now I have $3,500 in my account. And she ain't do nothing. She ain't do nothing. And I'm seeing this over and over and over and over and over and over again, where, and a lot of stuff is converting because I actually saw this on CoffeeZilla. And this guy who's an angel investor, he's a real angel investor, he said, you know, that, you know, to, to make money, be an angel, you know, investor. And th this is what's so funny. You know how he got to be an angel investor? He was an entrepreneur first. And there is all of these notions of being an investor and just letting your money work for you. And you don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do anything. You know? And I'm just like, I'm, di I'm, I'm disgusted and sick of it because as someone who has started a business, like email lists work, websites work getting on the phone, talking to customers, closing, it works. And I keep seeing that you don't have to do this I'm like over and over and over and over and over again. And one of the things that we're gonna get into in the art of holding is doing all of that stuff. <laughs> we're gonna get into that because that's how I know how to make money. I have websites, I do email marketing, I do text marketing, I'm getting ready to run ads, and I'm thinking about doing some chat bots. So essentially you're being fed a bunch of crap to sell a product that is probably not going to deliver on its promise. Cause I'm just like, I'm like, I'm, I'm signing up for it. I'm watching these webinars and no one ever says what you have to do. It's always, you can make this money. Jim in Des Moines, Iowa was making 30,000 a month. 
uh, Jane over here is doing 15,000 a month. And there's this big focus on the money. But see, here's the deal. Let's go ahead and look at recent events because I'll be talking about this for a minute. I was running paid ads and I found something that was a problem in my business. So what did I do? I tore my business down. And you know, I'm dealing with emails every day. I'm dealing with people who are confused and you know, we're just gonna have to ride this storm out. But why would I tear my business apart when it was making money? Because I now have information that's going to help me make even more money. And this is means that there's going to be somewhat of an interruption. And this is what real entrepreneurs do because uh, one of the things with all this fast money is you're not building a durable and sustainable business model. You're just building junk that can be easily replaced. I'm seeing Amazon automation. It's like essentially you go into a partnership with someone you don't know and they're supposed to automate all this stuff, handle all the sales, do all the heavy lifting and you just buy in at a ridiculously low level to like you spend fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars to get this automation and then you're supposed to make all of this money and I, I, I keep asking myself all right where do they win with this because let's all right so you've set up an agency that you get all of these people who've investing money into your agency and then you're supposed to have a split of the proceeds and you know, I haven't bought any of them because, you know, uh, I got to be real careful with that because, you know, time is valuable. I cannot get time back. So be very wary of the fast money, because let me tell you a true story. My first year of selling commercial office furniture, I did like 1.6 million in gross revenue, but the profitability was about 40,000 because I made a lot of mistakes. There was one project I made a $250,000 mistake. So if I hadn't made that mistake, I would have made like 300,000 that first year and probably would have still been in it. But because I had the perspective of selling the used stuff and the profit margins were like so much greater, that's what got me back into used stuff and got me into the storage auction business. But I had a good friend sit me down and he was like, man, you did good. You made a profit your first year. And this man who was really successful, uh, he owned a wholesale distribution business. And he said, I did not make money my first three years. He said, my wife almost left me. That's how bad it was. And this is what real durable entrepreneurs frequently go through. They will start a business and they will not make money for a year or two. They just won't and they'll work really, really hard. But that my friend, he's still in business. This is, he's been in business 30 some years. And one of the things I want to create and once I get with my series of real entrepreneurs, real business, I want to bring to you different business models. Cause one of the things I'm starting to see uh, Amazon Relay, a lot of people are going out and buying box trucks or renting box trucks to sign up for Amazon Relay. Um, I'm seeing everyone get into Airbnb and I'm seeing everyone get into Toro and I'm seeing everyone to get in trucking. And it's only a matter of time before all that stuff is saturated. It's just a matter of time. You know, there, there's a tipping point where so many people come to the market and get in the arena and it's gonna become a pricing battle. It's gonna become a pricing situation. And I'm here to tell you, man, if you orientate your mind, if you actually go into starting a business with the expectation that it's gonna take you some time to make profit, to get, become profitable and make some money, you're gonna be in a better situation than all of this fast money stuff because I, I gotta watch it. And this is another thing that I see. The Click Funnel Award is prominently positioned in many of these YouTube ads. 
And essentially ClickFunnels is a process where it allows you to set certain things up and take people through your funnel and put in numerous upsells. Now, if you notice, I don't really have, I don't have upsells. I don't have upsells to my, my funnels. It's like, this is what it is. And I actually tell you what you're gonna be doing and I actually get into it. And I know with template business models, such as getting in the Turo or doing Amazon Relay or getting in the trucking, it, like, like, like I said, you know, if that's what you wanna do and you feel you'll be good at it, knock yourself out. I'm just saying that we're moving to a saturation point. Just like when I came here on YouTube and I saw all these resellers talking about bolos, be on the lookout for, and they literally killed markets. They killed items I was selling for three, 400 bucks. That stuff started going for 70, $80 because there were so many people who were now finding this because of these recommendations of the YouTubers. And it's only a matter of time before Airbnb becomes saturated. It's only a matter of time. I actually had a consult with someone who drives for FedEx. And he said, we have taken a hit because all of these people getting into trucking. It's just a matter of time. Like right now there, there's um, Good Energy, Alex, I believe his name. There's Hood Estates, Jamar. These people have these courses and they're putting people in trucking. I, I'm gonna give it two to five years before it's gonna be tr really saturated and it's gonna get hard for new people to make money. You know how I know? Let's take Amazon FBA. Uh, Chris Green, who's a friend of mine, when Amazon FBA got started, like if you got an Amazon FBA 2009, 2010, you were literally able to take $500, start with that and scale that up to six figures. You want to know why? Because a lot of people weren't doing Amazon FBA. Now, if you get into Amazon FBA, you're going to need 20 to 50,000 to get started. And then you're going to have to spend money. Then you're going to have to buy ads on Amazon, which is so funny because these people will tell you like Amazon FBA, go put it on Amazon FBA. And that's where the customers are. Uh, many Amazon FBA sellers have to buy ads on Amazon to redirect people to their products. And essentially you cannot get into Amazon with, with 500 bucks or, or two, you know, and then everyone left Amazon or, you know, uh, Amazon arbitrage and then everyone moved to private label. Guess what's happening now? People are finding it challenging and difficult to make money with private label. So every time someone comes up with a course, or a process and they become wildly popular, it's only a matter of time before that industry is gonna be, you're gonna to have to be a really seasoned, particular knowledgeable player to make money in this industry or extremely well capitalized, extremely well capitalized. So this is what happened to Amazon FBA, it's gonna to happen to trucking, it's gonna happen with Amazon Relay, it's gonna happen because so many people are looking for these template businesses to get in versus starting something from scratch because look, if I'm gonna throw some money in a truck, you know, many people will go out and buy a truck, spend 20 to $40,000 and not think nothing of it. And I've actually talked to a lot of truckers and trucking is very, very capital intensive. Like if you get in trucking, you're gonna need $20,000 of liquidity on hand after you buy the truck, after you hire the driver. You wanna know why? If that truck suffers a breakdown of anywhere from two to 10,000 bucks, you're out of business until you get that truck fixed. You're out of business. And like I said, I'm just seeing what, I'm seeing certain trends. I'm seeing certain things that are happening and if you come through the art of holding and build a business that's durable, like, like my business, all right, let's talk about the storage auction business. The storage auction business, which was a good business, it was a fun business, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was just a hustle. And that's why when my partner got sick, I got sick, we had to shut it down. 
Now let's go back to what I currently do. I run a media education company. I got sick and didn't work for five months. Business kept making money, even though I wasn't working. So that's where I want to take this conversation. This is where I want to take you guys to building those kind of businesses. Like, you know, let's say your wife gets pregnant. Y'all have a kid and you just like want to stay home with your newborn child for a year. If you have a real business, that you can hire, put systems and processes into place, you can do that and still make money. But if you're just hustling or on one of these fast money schemes that's gonna require you to do all of the work, that's not gonna require you, that's not gonna, you know, cause I, I, I'm seeing, you know, and I'm gonna be talking about the certain industries that are about to be saturated. And this is another thing. Uh, I've seen a bunch of reviews of people who are having these business models that are dependent upon Facebook ads. Right now, Facebook ads are a hot mess. They're expensive. They're not, they're starting to not work as well as they once did. And everyone's running over to YouTube. And then what they're going to do is they're probably going to run back to Facebook and there's going to be this whole thing because and I'm going to talk about this in the YouTube super creative because there is a certain, you know, cause I've been watching a bunch of ads and I'm like, honestly, unless there's just a bunch of money behind some of these ads, I don't know how they're converting. I don't know how they're scaling because some of these ads frankly are boring. Uh, they're not imaginative and they're literally are going to take a tremendous amount of ad spend to reach some conversions. But once again, I don't know their numbers. I don't know what their back end. I don't know what their dashboard looks like, so I don't know. But once again, here at the franchise tag, we're gonna be talking about durable business models and setting up a business. Like car wash. A car wash is a service business, but you can set up a car wash to run without you being around. A lot of these fast money hustles, you can't do that. You just simply can't do that because you always got to be around in your Lambo on the gram. And that, that, that's a whole nother thing I'm going to be talking about because I am seeing there are many, many people who are, who are creating programs that I can see no evidence of being an entrepreneur. And some of these guys have made millions. Essentially, they've gotten a really good YouTube presence. They got a good Instagram presence. They got a good polished presentation and their their entrepreneur aspect is teaching people how to make money. They've never, ever run a real business with real customers like I did. I was in the storage auction business. I sold commercial. I sold new use, new commercial office furniture. I sold used commercial office furniture. I used to go on sales calls. I used to cold call. I did a lot of things that many of these people say you don't have to do. And I'm just sitting there like cold calling is hard. Making sales presentations is hard. Finding customers is hard, but this is what you have to do to build a durable business. This is what you have to do. And we're going to talk about it. But I just want to give you food for thought this morning because I'm going to be talking about this a lot more because I'm starting to see a nasty trend. And I'm very good at making predictions because I predicted what was going to happen with Amazon FBA before it happened. And the same thing is going to happen with trucking. Same thing is going to happen with a lot of this internet stuff. Same thing is going to happen with Airbnb. Airbnb, I think, is about to do an IPO. And, you know, let's talk about that. For the people who are, who got in early on Airbnb, Airbnb and invested, they about to get paid. Because if you didn't know, an initial public offering is a massive infusion of cash into a company. And depending upon how many shares you own, because essentially, like, this, the management team of Airbnb they all have a lot of Amazon Airbnb shares and what they're going to do 
is when they go public, they're going to sell some of those shares. And depending upon at the opening price, some of them are going to become instant billionaires. And they're still going to keep a bunch of shares because that's going to preserve their wealth. But I guarantee you, it's just a matter of time before Amazon FBA become not. Well, Amazon FBA is already saturated. It's just a matter of time before Airbnb becomes saturated. It's just a, we're, we're, we're moving in that direction. And I don't know. I have never stayed in the Airbnb, so I don't know what the Airbnb experience is, so I can't talk about it. But hotels, I was I went to my uh, doctor's appointment today and there's a brand new hotel they just built over by St. Joseph's Hospital. And I, then I, I started to look around. They're still building hotels. Why they're still building hotels? Because people are staying in hotels. Everyone ain't running to Airbnb. So it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. But I want you to actually contemplate, to think, to ponder starting a real business. Because um, one of the yard birds who left this comment, who was comparing me to all of these people, a lot of them have a they're they're big on social media they have a presence and a lot of them aren't entrepreneurs they've never run any real businesses and th this 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 is something because once again i've been doing this 12 years and i've been an entrepreneur for 21 years you think that was an accident let's see how many of these new jack swings have 21 year entrepreneur careers let's see how that goes down because uh some of these youtube channels they blow up and i'll see they only have like 4 million views i'm sitting on i think 17 18 million views and i'm just sitting there like hmm we're gonna see we're gonna see but be careful with the fast money because typically the fast money is like stripper money and you know stripper money gonna run out sooner or later sooner or later all right so for those of you who want to get into the art of holding I, I, i'm going to ask a few questions if you were in the corporate toolbox and your payment went bad you're going to have to re-sign up for the art of holding because i have more flexibility with paypal than i will with stripe with stripe once you're out there's nothing i can do except delete you then you have to sign up again and i'm just sitting there like all right so be really careful if you're on the payment plan go ahead and get a separate credit card or something that you're not using because we've had a lot of people who've run into issues where their debit card got compromised and i, I address this because if you sign up for the art of holding you're going to get the money management course for civilians you're going to get money management for corporate citizens and you're going to get the credit fit repair credit scaling course you're going to get all that and one of the things that you have to do is to have a segmented credit system where you have a card that's paying for something important so once again the links below for those of you who want to get in the art of holding and also no you sign up for the art of holding you sign up for the art of holding you're not going to get the youtube super creative if you were in the corporate toolbox and you paid in full, you get the YouTube super creative. If you're in the corporate toolbox currently and you're making your payments on time, you get the YouTube super creative. And give me some time to put together some kind of bundle where you'll get both. And more than likely, if you get both, I'm not gonna do it on a payment plan. I'm not gonna do it on a payment plan, but the links are below if you want to get into it. And we got a lot of training to go down in the next four to five weeks. So with that, I'll see you guys later. You have a good, good day.